to the Board of Education's board meeting. May I have a motion to go into closed session? I move we go into closed session. Pers oh, I'm sorry, pursuant to the general provision article 3-305 and 3-104, I move we go into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations and to consult with counsel. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. We will be back at 6 p.m. Welcome back to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education 6 p.m. open session meeting. Um, would, could we all please stand to say the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay. Um, at this time, we'll do the approval of the agenda. But don't we have to change the agenda? We have to go back and move somehow. Yeah. Because we're going back into closed. Do you want me to motion it? Sure, go ahead. I motion that we amend the agenda to add a closed session at the conclusion of this open session. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the open and closed minutes from June 13th? Uh, we need to make, a, I ma I make oh. a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Oh, second. I second. Go ahead. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. So now we move on to the approval of the minutes. May I have a motion to approve the open and closed minutes from June 13th and the 20th? To move. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Dr. Kane, would you like to share what you have been doing for the last month? <laughs> yeah, that was an open question, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah. So with the closing of school, it, it, things, uh, or at least events, have uh, settled down quite a bit. I am happy to say that uh, myself and Miss George uh, were, were glad to be out to the um, Sutlersville Market at Sutlersville Elementary School earlier in the month. That was a great success and a wonderful thing that you're doing to, um, to support the community. Thank you for that, Mr. Maggio. Um, also, um, you know, I went to Read to Horizons, the summer program that we have uh, at Gunston um, School, and the students there are doing a great job. It's a very diverse group of students. They get uh, their meals there, and they do reading and math, and they have guests to come in, like myself. And then earlier today, I can tell you that someone from University of Maryland was coming to do some science. Uh, with the students there. So that has been uh, wonderful. I would like to say also for the public that we are holding summer school um, at Chesapeake Community College. So it is not at APA this year, it is at Chesapeake Community College and a great partnership with them. I was able to meet last week with Dr. Coppersmith, the uh, new president of um, Chesapeake Community College and we are looking forward to doing great things uh, for the students in our community. I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. I have a parent whose child is going to the to the Chesapeake. On the, um, the extremely expensive. Has the price gone up because we're using Chesapeake? It, it's costing this child a thousand dollars to do a five five credit course in English. To this is credit uh, recovery, and it's five credits and it's two hundred a credit. So it's costing a thousand dollars. Thanks. And I'll have Mr. I see Mr. P shaking his head. So Mr. P will respond to that for you. And to my understanding, Captain Kelly, the, the price has not gone up just because we've gone to Chesapeake College. We've just merely moved the location. So there, there is not, the not an increase in cost. And if you remember, the tuition, which actually pays for the whole program, which is how we fund it. So that pays for the stipends of teachers uh, and so forth. But there's, no, there's not been a cost increase per course per credit. Well, would it be cheaper then? I don't understand what you mean. Like, was the cost two hundred dollars last year? Yes, yes. So it's two hundred dollars period, and, and because the student is taking five, um, that's, 
Yeah. It's one class. It's one in, one uh, history class that he didn't pass, and he's retaking it, and it's costing him a thousand dollars. Can you? Can you f- no. uh, that doesn't make yeah, sense to me. But can you uh, I'll s- I'll put, put me in contact with that yeah. individual? The parents me. understood. Sure. So I thought I heard you to say that the child was taking five courses, and it's two hundred dollars a course. Five credits. Okay. And for one. And, and that would be. But five no course is five credits. We don't have a course that's yeah, five credits. So, so that child is taking multiple credit. courses. But Mr. P will, will I'll, I'll, I'll worry about that. Yeah, sure. As long as the price didn't go up. It, um, it did not. And when they do course recovery then, do we, um, do we have a sliding scale based on need or not? How so what work? we've done is when we, um, there's a, a fund that happens and uh, our own employees contribute to it for um, what had been a, I believe maybe a um, contribution to student, to children who were sick. It might have been a cancer fund or something. Sure. I apologize. <coughs> I don't have the exact name. But what we agreed to, what we agreed to as a leadership team was to use those dollars to fund our own students who needed to go to summer program and did not necessarily have all of the funding for it. So we've collected funds here within the county and we use them for our students to go to summer program. There is not, from what I understand, a sliding scale. Um, it is $200. It may be, is there a um, adjustment for students who receive free and reduced yes. cost meals? Yes. So those students do not pay. Correct. But for, but there's not a sliding scale based on income. It's either $200 or students are not paying because they receive free and reduced cost meals. Okay. It's an incentive to pass, but it definitely is. It is. <laughs> it is. So that, that's it for me, Mr. Maggio. Okay. Mr. Pruliski, do you have anything? Mr. Maggio, the only thing is uh, in June we had the two-day leadership institute at the community college, which was a great success. One day uh, on equity that we've had uh, two outside consultants paid through Title II federal funds. The second day was on a data-wise improvement process, our school improvement process. Um, just want to let you know that was a successful t- two-day that wrapped up the school year, but also sets us for our priorities going into next year. That's all I have to report. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Harlow, would you like to do the community participation thing at this time? Sure. Welcome to our community part of our um, board meeting where community members can speak. We ask that speakers keep in mind the following guidelines. They should sign the roster at the door on the information table. Please include your telephone number and your address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Organizations and municipalities and elected officials will be allowed five minutes. Individuals will be allowed three minutes. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item, an agenda item that is expected to appear in the future, or a matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Please do not discuss items related to negotiations. Those items are to be discussed at the bargaining table. This is not the proper venue to address specific student or employee personnel matters, especially those matters on legal appeal to the board. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or processed through the available channels. Citizens' participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure not an appropriate staff member responds to your questions at a later date. The board respects your desire and your right to convey your message freely, but asks as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you respect the board's request to refrain from naming citizens or name calling when offering your critique. Is there anybody who would like to speak? <laughs> we will move right on to the next item. <laughs> After you did all that, I'm I, sorry, I'm I, sitting you here have laughing. To. You absolutely <laughs> have to. Dr. Kane, would you like to introduce the presentations? Absolutely. We have two presentations this evening. Our first presentation will be um, presented by Ms. Tony Schultz, and that is regarding meal prices for um, next year, 2018-19. Good evening. Um, President DiMaggio, Vice President George, board members, and Dr. Kane. Um, my name is Tony Schultz. I'm the coordinator of supporting services. I'm here tonight to present a proposal for a meal price increase. Um, Basically, we are required by USDA and the State Board of Education to use what they call a paid lunch equity tool. And what it does is make 
sure that the um, prices we are charging for a paid meal are not subsidized by the reimbursement rates for free and reduced meals. Um, in your um, on board docs in your packet, there is a um, the page out of the calculator that basically goes through and here you can't see it but it basically goes through and tells you your number of paid meals for October and you put in the meal prices and it calculates your average um, your weighted average and with our meal prices for October being it's 265 for middle and high and 240 for elementary and the average um, monthly revenue the weighted average is 254 and with their calculations for our what we should be charging for a meal they're saying that we should have a weighted average of 264 so the next the next page well, the bottom of that page actually has a, um, an option where you can move it around and put in prices so that you can come up with your 264 weighted average. So we increase our meal prices by 10 cents. That would bring our weighted average up to $2.64, which is what we have to have to be in compliance with USDA. So what we're recommending is that we increase our breakfast price by a nickel and our lunch prices by 10 cents for the coming school year. Um, that would bring the breakfast price up to $1.50. It would bring your elementary lunch to $2.50 and your middle and high lunch to $2.75. Some of the factors that have contributed to um, Meal price increase are the increase in a minimum wage to 10 10 an hour. Increased food cost and increased fuel cost. They charge a $2 surcharge per delivery for fuel cost. Um, the last time we increased meal prices were in 2016 and 17. We increased them by 15 cents. Another sheet in, that I included in there was the, or the meal cost for the current year throughout the state. The, the lines that are highlighted, they use, they're, they're in the, what's called the CEFP or the Community Eligibility Program. They have more than 60% free and reduced throughout their county, so they are able to apply for this program and all the students eat at no cost, breakfast and lunch. So that's Somerset, Dorchester, and Baltimore City. Kent County has MMFA, which is Maryland Meals for Achievement, breakfast in the classroom at their um, elementary and middle schools. So when I did the state average, I actually didn't include that number when I divided the, the total of the, what they charge for meals throughout the state. So basically, if we raise their price, we would still be within the state average for the current year for, for lunch. And we'll be a little bit above for breakfast. We do not qualify for CEP in, in Queen Anne's and any of our schools. We do qualify for Maryland Meal for Achievement, and we have that at Southersville Elementary and Southersville Middle. That's breakfast in the classroom. And we also have it at Anchor Points Academy. It's not at Graysonville? No. You have to be at least 40% free and reduced at the school to qualify for breakfast in the classroom. Grasonville is about 36 and a half percent. So, is there any questions? It says uh, under the program regulations, 
that there's two ways to meet the requirement. One is the paid, and the other is the non-federal sources. Is that the non-federal sources that you just talked about? Two ways to, to make sure you're not subsidizing meals with federal funds would be increasing your meal price or funds from the general account, school account. Why? Well, I guess I'm confused by all this because I thought we had a contract with Sodexo to do all this. We do have a contract with Sodexo. Okay. Um, so this this is this is about the cost of the meals and us proposing that we well it's about compliance as well. So USDA says that you have to fall within a certain range for a cost of meal because of all the things that goes that goes into. Um, the cost of providing those meals. So that calculator puts school districts on a, on the path to get to the amount that they should charge. And we're proposing to increase what we charge by 5% for breakfast. I mean, 5 cents for breakfast, 10 cents for lunch, which will put us in compliance, yes, but it also keeps us in the average range for the state. So we're not charging any more than um, folks across the state were average. I guess I still don't understand why we do that if Sodesco is the one that we have the contract with to do it? Because the USDA deals with the school, school district. Mm -hmm. it, it, we could have whatever vendor we choose to provide the food, mm -hmm. but we're held responsible for meeting the requirements. So what's going to happen, if you didn't have anything else, um, Ms. Schultz, is we're going to come back and ask for a, a motion to, uh, to, uh, for approval to increase the cost of breakfast and lunch. So she wanted to share with you how we came about the five cents and okay. the ten but cents. She did say there was two ways, right? So there's there's raise the lunches or we take it from the general fund. Is that what you just said? From our budget? Take it out of our budget is what you're saying. So right. we'd have to budget for that. Well, what about Sodexo's profit margin? What? I guess, like, I guess maybe that's see, where that's where I'm that's money. Where I'm like, that's like, why are we paying for maybe Sodexo making yeah, money? Yeah, could you yeah. please? Oh, I see, we I see what you mean. they charge us a management fee and they give us a guarantee. The guarantee helps pay for replacing equipment that, that goes up that we can't repair anymore, it helps pay for repair costs. We're charged for, um, different supplies that that maintenance uses in in um like in keeping refrigeration our machine, and machines up and running so the guarantee they give us helps helps keep us solvent so we're, the, we're not in the red we don't operate in the red and what would be the total average of what we're looking for that number that, that if we had to take it out of the general fund how much money would that be um there, there is a piece in the calculator. I can, I can get that for you. Um, it, it's quite substantial. I mean, what, so you have what, uh, 26,000, 27,000 students. Should we multiply that by 10 cents? Uh, 480 days. <laughs> right. I mean, is that what uh, the calculation yeah, 20, is? I can do that. I would say 27,000 um, number of lunches for the month times 10 months at 10 cents. Like I say, there, there is a piece in that where you plug in the numbers. I would just like to know, like, if we're going to vote on raising lunch prices, but you told us there's another option, I want to know what the numbers are for both. Okay. I'll, I'll, go get, I'll go get that for you, so when I come back, I'll have it. I guess I also want to understand the ramifications of, like, if if we don't agree to this, you talked yeah, about. That's, yeah, because I, I tell you, I'm just not crazy about continuing to to keep lunches going no, up. No, and the I guess. lunches going up. I'm sitting here figuring, and for a high schooler, it's twenty one seventy five a, a week. Mm-hmm. You know. If I'm correct, the, the price for the 10 cents for the um, 27,000 um, lunches, it would be about $27,000 a year that we would take out of the general fund to sub supplant into that. So that 10 cents generates about $27,000. Okay. And then we would have to re then renegotiate the contract with Sodesco for that? No. No? Not, not for that because it wouldn't come from them. No, but I mean if we... Now this, this is all based upon USDA. Sure. And yeah. 
objectives? What we're, we do is we go through the calculation, but our main goal is to try to keep it affordable at around the state average, you know, or below the state average. Some of them, if you look on there, are over $3 or at $3 a lunch. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we would fall right at the state average with this, um, with the proposal. So, three, so two years ago. again, it's about 27000 that we'd have to come up with. Hmm. When does when when do you have to to know this? Well, schools are already asking me what the meal prices are because they're trying to do their handbooks for for next school year. As you know, it's not a I mean, it, it's a typical. I mean, it's unfortunate, but we already know the the cost of things don't stay the no, same no, and, I, I, and we I didn't <coughs> we didn't increase <coughs> pardon me the cost for lunches for 17 18 right. last one was 16 17 right. just two years ago and I, I don't know of a district that pays for lunches right. out of general right. funds well I guess if we have to do it we have to do it but we can get your information that um, Ms. George is requesting before we leave here today. Okay. Um, so this will come back up at action items. Okay. All right. So our next presentation will be done by uh, Mr. Tolley. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. King. I am pleased to be here tonight to present the findings of the MSDE Office of Civil Rights visit that was conducted in um, March and uh, April as well. So I just want to give you a quick um, review of this. This was um, announced to us back in the fall that they were going to be um, conducting this visit. It was Queen Anne's County Public Schools and Talbot uh, County Public Schools on the Eastern Shore that were um, subject to this review. This is the history of it. Um, came about in 1973, uh, and it falls based on this um, lawsuit that happened. It falls within the CTE realm, so that's um, why well, it falls under my umbrella here. Um, and here's, and, and again, this is just a quick overview of of what they did. They visited. Um, the team from MSDE visited schools on the 26th of March and April 11th to look at the, the they visited two high schools, Ken Island High School and Queen Anne's uh, County High School to look at the facilities to check um, accessibility to make sure they were in um, compliance. And then on March 28th, the team came here and did a, um, a full day session, interviewed 13 of our CT teachers, 12 students, six from each high school, uh, and then staff from central office and asked them various questions just um, about programs, accessibility, uh, and that type of thing. Um, once that interview on the 28th was concluded and the site visits were concluded uh, on the 11th, the uh, Department of Education issued a letter of finding to us. And once that letter of finding was issued, they outlined um, you know, what we needed to do to become compliant um, with their findings. We had 60 days to respond, um, which we did. The plan that we created is hyperlinked into the presentation. There was basically five corrective actions um, that they listed, all um, very minor things we have in the plan. We have addressed um, all the issues. The first four um, issues are just one issue each. Um, Corrective Action 5 deals with the issues that, that they found at the schools, um, and they're in the plan you'll see is just issues, you know, at each school that uh, Mr. Pender and his team have um, addressed or set a timeline um, of when they are going to be addressed. We submitted this plan to MSDE, um, and this was submitted on June, I believe, 29th. On July 2nd, MSDE sent us a confirmation that they received our plan and that the plan was approved as it was written, as it is written, and then it was up to us to, to follow through. Again, the, most of the items have already been taken care of. There are some of the facility um, 
items that Mr. Pender and his team are working on and, and that will be corrected. So all in all, it was a very good, um, very good visit. Uh, we cleaned up some things that they needed us to, to take care of. Very much a collaborative effort. Um, uh, everybody was involved and needed to be involved. And uh, again, very successful State Department quickly issued the letter uh, accepting our plan. And um, State Department was also pleased in the correspondence that we've had with the way things were set up, how everybody worked together. Um, the interview with the students, they were extremely impressed with our students, how they um, carried themselves, um, and just and, and our teachers as well. It was just a very, uh, very successful visit. So we are, we are pleased with what happened. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a few questions? Yes, ma'am. So my laptop's not working. Can we go back to the slide where you looked at corrective actions? Mm -hmm. And my first question was, when you guys conducted um, the interviews, what criteria was being looked for as to what would have been required to be in compliance? So basically, they are look for the for the CTE programs. They're looking at a, a, an overall program um, overview basically and they're just looking to see accessibility into CTE programs so do all students have equal access do, yes okay yes and that was not that was not an issue at all um, oh. students have equal access one of the if you look at um, that was one criteria mm -hmm. okay. corrective action number three it was a, we had to revise um, admission practices basically it was stated our admission practices were stated at one high school and not the other so we put those How together do you get admitted mm -hmm. to this pathway or program this yes program. Okay. and and they just and they when they talked to the students they talked to the teachers they asked about accessibility to programs they asked about um, <clears throat> special education students they asked about how you know they were provided services and so they're just doing a, an overall um, review of what we're doing and to make sure that we are not discriminating um, entry into our programs once they're into the programs that we're not discriminating um, you know on on any of the circumstances in uh, Title VI civil rights uh, law. Um, what is a non-compliant public document? Our, our action plan. So uh, those are the revision, uh, revisions of the documents that were out there. They're public documents. They were just the ones that were non-compliant. So those were, okay. And that basically just meant some of our documents did not have a non-discrimination disclosure on them. One of the documents was a work-based learning agreement that we have, uh, and that did not have a non-discrimination disclosure for employers to sign. So I revised that document. Now that's on there. So when our students go out to a, a work-based learning experience, and employers have to acknowledge that they do not discriminate um, and that they have to sign off on our non-discrimination disclosure. Mm, interesting things for our students to learn who are going to be out in the work world and seeing these things uh, in their adult life. Definitely. Okay. Is this an, an annual check or is this the first year they've this, when When they came down and, and visited us in Talbot, they, the gentleman from the State Department, and I can't remember how long he's been doing it, over 15 years, maybe 18 years, he did not have any record of ever coming here or to Talbot County. Um, so. This will not, certainly will not be an annual, annual thing, and they will follow up to make sure that we have that we have followed through with our plan. And again, we have done the majority of the items or in the plan have been completed, so it won't be an annual review by any means. This is unique to the CTE programs, but are there other programs that we should be that we are responsible for for this kind of a? Of an evaluation well the school system overall is is responsible you know to to make sure that we're not discriminating based on you know race gender um, nationality so the the programs it just falls under the the CTE is basically CTE program are basically the door you know for this and then they do look at they do look at access to programs so so it, it falls under CTE but the um, the things that we have to be in compliance with are across the district oh. So the non-discrimination, our policy for non-discrimination in all the protected groups, that's for everything. It's just that this is how they manage uh, monitoring it. So there were some things, say for example, that we needed to make sure that a uh, water fountain was um, operational. And so that doesn't have anything to do with CTE, but it's just how they monitor it through the CTE program. Your door closers have to be like five to 10 pounds. So every door in the school was tested with a closer with the pressurized to make sure that it meets those. Um, 
the swing speed of the door coming back. The, the water fountain level of the water coming out of the water fountain was appropriate. The um, markings, do you have enough uh, van accessibility spots? Um, oh, okay. Is there proper signage? Oh, so some handicap Patches, you know. This is like a collaborative like ADA CTE compliant. program. Yeah, she was just, we're just kind of when you, sure. when you look at this, though, as far as the facility standpoint, you look at when the building was built based upon what the standards are. So, you know, over the years, the standards have changed. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of ours were very minor things as far as just the pressure of the door, um, mm -hmm. a latch, or a, um, uh, a handicap ADA sticker that was yanked off a wall or something. I mean, uh, we do have to go back and do some striping of the uh, parking lot to add a few additional um, uh, handicap parking spots that are accessible via a van, so. The um, non, I'm sorry. Are you done? Oh, okay. Uh, the non-discrimination um, language. Where was? Where did I see that? It was the first one. The first. The yeah. The, what was put onto the documents to make them in compliant? That language that's used is from where? Or do, can we read it? Or the non-discrimination is derived, if if I'm correct, from title from Title so Six that's, Civil Rights. That's language that's used on. We're not the, it's not just Everybody our, uses yes, it. it's Everybody not that uses, we took yes. it and made it something unique for our county. It's correct. Okay. Everybody uses it. It's that and same clause. There are other emails on and, and, yeah. Yeah. Yes. and on public documents. That, and in fact, we're going to ask Mr. Maggio to sign mm -hmm. um, tonight for, for Mr. Pender. So we federal, added, I'm sorry. It's federal mm -hmm. language, not state. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so this is federal coming down to our local level. Yes. Okay. And we provide the link to the federal page so that everybody can yeah. see that everything is included. Yeah. So I think a couple of protected groups were added. So genet or and or information. So mm -hmm. genetics information was added to um, our current one. Mm -hmm. So there were a couple of of different mm -hmm. um, groups that we put in there. So it complies with federal. Yeah, and I think that's important sometimes for everyone to understand. Um, you know, a lot of what we have to do has to do with federal and state, not necessarily just us making decisions here in Queen Anne's County, because I get asked that a lot. Very much so. Okay. And this re this review was very thorough by the state. They looked at, yeah. <laughs> I mean, tons yeah. of documents and the review that they did on, at the schools with Mr. Pender over two days, very thorough. And mm -hmm. uh, for just for us to come out with a few corrective actions, I think, is, yeah. is uh, notable. Did we have less than Talbot County? Because it was just our county and Talbot. I don't. Right? I don't remember what they had, but they they went through the same thing, um, and it was again they were they were in you know minor as well. Nothing nothing oh, major. Good. Nothing big pro programmatic changes. So, how did Queen Anne's and Talbot get picked? It's a good question. Um, the state has they they have a, a calculation matrix that they use when they look at the programs. Um, I don't know how it fell. But again, they, they said they don't have any record of Talbot and Queen Anne's being reviewed, so I think maybe that had a, mm -hmm. a part to play in it as well. Okay. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Tolley? Thank you, Mr. Tolley. Thank you. Okay, um, so we are scheduled for a break. Does anyone want to take a break? No. So we will move on to the HR report. Mr. Farley. Members of the board, I would ask that you approve the HR report as presented. I move that we approve the HR report as presented at a closed session. Second. All in favor say hi. Aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Mr. Pender. Yes, we have uh, two individuals that um, have passed all the requirements to be a substitute bus driver for 2018-19, and that is Margaret Ellen Kamenovich and Suzanne Lee. I'm I don't have enough work for her. You don't have enough work for her. And no, her. She is actually certified to drive a bus again. She um, did that for many years also in Kent County and went back and got her recertification just in case something happens that we need a bus and a pinch that she can, you know, grab one and go with oh, it. Okay. So, um, 
it was kind of interesting to see her driving down uh, 301, <laughs> driving a bus. So. <laughs> it's good that she knows what's required to well, the bus drivers. 30 some years, so. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so I was looking to have those two individuals approved. Okay, so let's see. I make a motion we approve the transportation report that's presented by Mr. Pinder. Second. So moved. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank you. And um, I guess Ms. Schultz. Ms. Schultz, would you like to? That was perfect timing. <laughs> um, what I did was I actually printed out the page where it said how much we should be um, increasing. Be able to look at it a little better than on the screen. So basically, the page it says price adjustment calculator. It's actually suggesting we increase the price 26 cents, but there is a 10 cent cap. So as long as we're making a concerted effort in the in the direction so that we're not subsidizing meals with with um, reimbursement. We're, we can stick with the 10 cents. So if you look at the non-federal contribution calculator, it want, wants you to enter the number of paid lunches for the 16, 17 school year, and you multiply that by the 26 cents. So it's actually $63,000. And if you raise the prices 10 cents, that brings it down to 24,234. <laughs> And you have a remaining balance of thirty-eight thousand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it was two different sheets of paper. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I got one. You, I'm sorry. Tell me, would you say that again? Uh, I'm sorry. The part, not the <laughs> the part wouldn't be. We could do only ten, under ten percent. You can do ten cents. You don't have to raise the price twenty-six cents like the, the calculator actually. Indicates. Indicates. But how's it get paid then if we don't? Oh, we just falling out of compliance. As long as you're making a concerted effort to to head in the, that direction so that you're not subsidizing meals when when they come to do the review, we're fine. Because like it's, it, it puts right in here that you can do a cap of 10 cents. That is. Dr. Kane said we've never subsidized meals from the general fund. Yeah. So and you're saying that is what we would have to do? That's that's what USDA would want you to do, yes. Would want us to do? Virus to do. I guess I'm also curious on that trend of where we are in terms of the state. Um, we talked a little bit, I think we touched on it, um, to stay in line with that trend. And this was an effort us to do that you within the state average you mean yeah yeah so that we're um well we always look at the state average piece because we like to you know stay within the state average we don't want to be way high yeah. can, can i just clarify one thing it's not that usda wants school districts to subsidize they're right. saying <laughs> don't subsidize but if in fact you do there are only two ways for it to happen either somebody's gonna have to pay you know a parent or whomever is gonna have to pay for it or the school district would have to use general funds they're not and i have to tell you i don't know of a school district that does um mm. i think that it's not anything new for parents who pay for lunches <laughs> to know that over a period of time the cost increases. This is not new. It's been going on since forever. I mean, I think, honest to goodness, I'm telling my age, but I think when I was in elementary school, uh, we paid about 40 cents for lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can remember 35 cents. <laughs> so, and our last increase, I'm sorry, remind me, was a, a couple years ago. Is that right? Our last increase here? 2016 Which, 17. 2016. So, okay, this so current school year, we did not have an increase. Yeah. And we're proposing the increase for 17, 18, I mean, 18, 19, because costs have increased. So uh, I, does that, 
typically happen where every year, if not every other year, we're increasing our meal yeah. prices. Yep. Okay. Yep. Right. I wouldn't be so dead set against it if the, the meals were better than what we are serving. <laughs> and I know that's all government too, but. The bottom, you want to go to $2.50 for lunch, is what you said. So Move up from 40 to 50. For, for, is that right. For oh, elementary, so yeah. Elementary and 275 for middle and high. Looking at the historical data, it looks like there was an increase in 2010. Two years later, there was an increase in 2012. Then for about three to four years, oh. around 2015, 16, I'm sorry, 2017, it did go up. 16, 17. Um, 15 cents that year. So it appears over time it, it looks to me like for three to four years it kind of stays at a flat rate and then it goes up um, um, from in uh, 2012 it actually went up 30 cents Wow. Um, what that and in 2015 or I'm sorry 2016 it went up 15 cents so it's actually but can I just ask a question, though? I know you just explained Sadesco and stuff, but it, it says the cost factors are increased minimum wage. So, I mean, w doesn't Sadesco pay for their pay their own employees, or are we paying Sadesco's employees? They pay their employees okay. out of the profit they get from these meals. But then we we pay for food, and labor. We, we pay all that. So the funds their cost of business account. is going up, and they're asking us to help subsidize that. Yeah, see that's, 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 that's just kind of where we started the conversation, and then we got on the like federal. That's stuff, what and happens. Like, well, I know. That's why you I spend know. more at the grocery store. So store then, too. You, right? And so then it's like, well, you know, who's do they play hardball? And then it's the like, contract with Sodexo did not increase this year. Okay. They don't. It stayed the same. But yet the. We were being asked to increase a meal price, so I don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's Sorry. not. I, I don't know that. The I, money that, that we collect in the schools does not go in Sodexo's account. It goes in. We have an account for every school, and the money's deposited every day in our account. Everybody thinks it's Sodexo's money, and it's not Sodexo's money. Yeah, but we're paying Sodexo. Yeah, we're paying them for to their manage contract. it. For contract. We're right. paying them exactly. to hire hire the people, train the people. Right. Purchase the food. The right. Yeah, this is, I guess, too separate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I guess it's not going to help us right now. Right. Well, I did have a question. So if we're raising the prices of meals, is it just going to be, like, the general price or, like, the kids who get free and reduced lunch, the kids who are paying, like, the reduced rate, is their <laughs> price going up as well? No. Good no. question. The, re Good reduce, Good the question. Re re the reduced rate is determined by the state, and as a matter of fact, starting next year, they're going to we're going they're going to start decreasing that rate, and over like three or four years, it's going to be at the, a point where they don't Increase there aren't going to be any reduced lunches; they'll all be free. But right. the state of Maryland is paying for that. They said that. Okay, that was a great question. That is a good yeah. question. Yeah, it's if we don't pay for it by parents paying for it then it's got to come out of our general fund so one way or the other yeah. it has to be paid because it's a governmental thing not a yeah and the whole right. renegotiation room with Sodexo isn't I guess on the table right how now. long how much how long is their contract this is the last year on their contract we'll have to rebid it in the spring okay they have a four um, it's a one-year contract with four renewals is how how the oh, bid okay. is written so it's a five-year, actually, it's a five-year event. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, ladies. So so I just have a question about the 10-cent cap. If there's been years in the past where we've gone up 15 or 20 cents. 30 cents one year. 30 cents. Was the cap higher that year? We, we didn't, haven't been using the paid lunch equity tool I'd have to go back and see how many years it's it's on, it's been less than 10. Okay. Well, that, that we, explains some that of that. That we've actually used that paid lunch equity tool that the USDA has put it out there every year and we have to use it. Cuz really, we need to go up 26 cents, but we're going to stick to the cap of 10 and ride the 16 over to next year 
and deal with that and along with next year's increase. And, and I guess, I guess ha how we're that... We're just kicking the can down the road. I guess how that thing actually works is since you put the paid meals in and multiply them by what you charge. Right. That's how they determine, I guess if you had more paid meals, it would actually cover more. That could be so. More, more paid meals than reduced. Than how many, how many kids meal. on a weekly or monthly um, buy lunch out of the 7,700 kids? Just an estimate. I, I'd have to look. I, don't, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I mean, that, the numbers on that sheet. So are how, it, how it's many? showing um, monthly number of paid lunches is for 17, 18, 15,523. Um, at the funny. secondary, and then 11,487 at the elementary. Oh, okay. See, that, that was in October mm -hmm. that year. Mm -hmm. So this past October. So I'd say if you just took that for a month and divided it by four weeks, days. it comes out to about 6,750 meals. That's a lot of kids. Well, a lot more by than we really and think. And oh. He was waiting. Hey, Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting for that question. Yeah. All right, well, ladies, let's uh, not ponder, keep continue to ponder on this because it looks like this is the only thing we can do. So, may I have a motion to approve the meal price increase as presented? So moved. All in favor say aye. You need a second. second. Oh, I thought, oh. I thought Carrie second. I said she so moved. moved. I need to say second. Second. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> How many months have I, I been doing this? Second. Did someone make <laughs> Maybe you I should said I needed she, a move first. She first. She Somebody she needed a second. You said you asked for a motion. Okay. She said so move. Okay. Now you need a second. second. Now you do the vote. Shoo. Uh, I'm all confused well, here. Already, yeah, okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. So we'll move on to the field trip for the Ken Island High School Choir to attend Walt Disney World. We have a motion to approve the Ken Island High School Choir, Walt Disney World, November 28th to December 1st of 2018. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it move on to the Queen Anne's County uh, Board of Education handbook. Has anybody had a chance to look at these? I looked at them. My, my only um, thought is what, I don't know why we wouldn't, the only change I would say, and I didn't mention it to Jackie, but maybe we should be putting our new board members in there. I don't think we should no. put board members in all in, in here. I mean, it changes so often. Mm, um, yeah, and then you Jackie said most DRAs don't put a student board member in. Or I mean, even us. I mean, no, that's what I said. I, yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I don't think that's that that's necessary to have. It's our handbook. It's we know it's our handbook. I don't know why we have to to be on the page because it would just take in that. five months. It's going to change, and then you got to do it again. So I mean, it's up to everyone else, but I just don't. I'm fine with taking my name out. <laughs> What's everyone else think? Oh, we said we were taking that Queens County thing to public school. I don't think we could. I mean, I don't have a problem with having them names in there. We could just change the one piece of paper each time. That's, That's fine. That way we at least look at it. Um, That's fine. Which, I mean, in consulting with Jackie, she said generally they're not there. That's so right. I'm fine with them That's not being there. That's why I asked her. Uh, I, I'm good with that, Annette. The other ones that, that were given to us didn't have all that in uh -huh. them. I'm, it's I'm a, good with that, it's Annette. It's the board members, you know. Yeah, it's so members. it's not like we're passing this yeah. out. It's yeah. the board yeah. members. We know okay. as to who we are as I, board I'm, members. I'm, go so. I'm good with them all coming out. Doesn't matter to yeah. me. Yet. So, Jackie, you can take out that. That whole page. That whole go. page. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we had talked about taking the short history of public schools in Queen Anne's County out also. Did we? Oh my, I I, my notes are in the car. I and could then, run out there and get them, and I kind of wish I had. And then Sorry, I, think was, I, I felt like I brought that up in one meeting, and then it was decided that that was a good thing to keep in there. But well, because that's we my were recollection. also changing our vision statement, too. Yeah.
I'm fine with leaving it. Um, I'm actually looking I'm at my mock we up our local history. book, and I don't see it being removed. So yeah, I think we does, decided it, to leave it. You did have the conversation, yeah, and we did. I, re we did. I recall that yes, the final consensus was to leave it. To, to leave, leave it. it. Okay. All right, that's fine. So is there any more questions about the, the handbook and the um, Board of Education Appeals Guide? Or do we have two separate things? So we, we've separated the documents um, as you requested. My, my only um, comment is that we want to be certain that um, council did not take issue with any of the items um, that were in this handbook. I don't think he did. No, he didn't. On the record. Sure. The only change was the I think public comment. Which For the record, uh, Darren Burns, Board Council. Uh, in previous iterations, we had reviewed the handbook, including proposed changes from the board members. And once we had gone through those, uh, um, I had no objections on any legal grounds to uh, the latest version. We had talked about separating, which you have done, the appeal procedures portion, which had occupied half of your handbook. And um, uh, I will work with Ms. Wright as well on trying to condense that some because there's a lot of repeated language in that. But with respect to your handbook, your piece of it, if you're satisfied with this, then, then, then I am. Yeah. We, I would ask that, and I think Ms. Wright would want this, once you do approve this, we'll take one final spin through for any site changes in the most recent legislation that would go into effect this year just to make sure that no, nothing's changed in a five-month interval. Other than that, it, it, uh, I have no objections to it. I uh, thank you. Okay. So if we don't have any further questions, may I have a motion to approve the Board of Education handbook? So moved. I need a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Now we move on to future action items. Did, did you want to say anything about the appeals guide? Well, we other than what Mr. Byrne said. No, so, I. Because it's simply what was in that what book. What was already lifted, in, we just took to it out. in a separate document. So we'll go give it another. I mean, did anybody have through. any other questions about yeah. taking the appeals out of the handbook? I think we were pretty adamant yeah, we about look this. at it before we vote on it. So, okay. So, no then. So removed, but with no changes. Right. Okay. Right. Good. So it's not so much. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. So policies for a first read, 30-day review, code of ethics, policy number 104, non-discrimination and equity, policy number 421, Non-discrimination of students, regulation number 421.1. Non-discrimination of employee, regulation number 421.2. Mr. Farley? Did we put this out, Mr. Farley? Was this something that we put out? When you say put out, this would be for, for the first, first read. read. The, so oh, this is going out for the first yes, read. Yes, that's correct. Okay, all right, okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. And looking, if I'd read a little bit farther, it says that. Okay, so have, may I have a motion to approve the policies as read to go for a first read? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. And I would just like to encourage the public to read these policies. First, the ethics policy, because it's responsive to the curriculum audit and makes us uh, add the purchasing process to the ethics provisions, as well as adding a kind of a deadline for everyone to get their non, you know, their dis financial disclosures in and reviewed. And I want to commend the ethics panel for their good work most recently in getting these things promptly addressed. With regard to the non-discrimination policies, I think it is the first global overarching statement we've had about discrimination. It's inclusive. It, it focuses on a culture that's welcoming and culturally competent. Uh, and I, I want to celebrate that statement and the guidance that it gives for all of our employees and students in knowing they have a right not to be discriminated against or harassed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Farley. I do have one question on the ethics. Are, has, 
So have all required <coughs> forms been turned in and has the ethics panel reviewed them? Because we have some, obviously, deadlines in there. Um, I'm, not, I'm afraid I didn't hear what you said. And I think the answer is yes. But the question was, have all disclosure forms been turned in and any disputes resolved? We have a deadline on that. That's correct. Yes. And the panel has looked at all of them? Um, this past year, yes. They did? Okay. This one. Thank you. And I really thank uh, Jackie Wright for uh, all of her good work in organizing that and making sure that everybody came to the table and got, got it done. Thank you, Mr. Farley. So now we'll move on to the textbook adoption uh, U.S. history. May have a motion to approve the textbook U.S. history to go for a first 30-day read. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Um, I know it's not official or anything, but she is sitting here and um, Good job. I would like to introduce the Queen Anne's County High School um, <coughs> student who will be sitting with us for the next year, Ariel Miles. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. And um, Hopefully you'll learn a whole lot of things. <laughs> I'm already starting to. She's, she's ready to go. <laughs> okay, so now we'll move on to 9.03, Citizen Advisory Council. Ms. Harley, would you like to share anything regarding the Citizen Advisory Council with our public? Again, just a reminder that we will be putting out a press release asking various community members and parents, entities, taxpayers um, for their participation. I hope to get um, the final language clarified on the press release here in the next month with the board's help and get that out and maybe have that committee form by the beginning of school thank you miss harlow mm -hmm. um do we have anyone that would like to uh, speak at this time for the citizen public comment same <laughs> group of people here isn't it <laughs> 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 okay so uh, future meetings and events, the next school board meeting will be held on August 1st. And the school board work session for August 15th has been canceled. May I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, Annette, just let me do a reminder session. that the oh, that's July right. 18th board retreat meeting was also canceled. Oh, okay. It may be reinstated in the future, but just a reminder that that has been removed from our calendar You know, I list. thought about that the other day. We need to go and back in the closest. Yes. I didn't have that on the so I need a motion to go. No, I guess we just, okay. We're just going to get a closed session. That's what's next so on our we, agenda. We can we adjourn? Motion. Did we, we vote the adjournment? Can't we? Did we, we vote on the adjournment? No, we we have to come back session. out of closed. Oh, we have to come back out. Okay. And then come okay. back and adjourn. All right. So um, at this time, we will be going uh, back into closed session. So thank say you, that. and say why. Um, oh, okay, sorry, yes, pursuant ahead. to the general provision, Article 3-305, I move that we go into closed session to discuss uh, matters that relate to negotiations and to consult with council. A second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Thank you. We'll see you at our August 1st meeting. Could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? I motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank you. Yeah.